here's how chess works. When you play chess, you sit down, you have your ideas, and your opponent sits down and they have their ideas. And it's usually easy to see our own ideas, like, ooh, I have mate in three, da 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 da. But if you just ignore your opponent's ideas and they have mate in two, then you, you've missed everything and the game's over. So today we're gonna be looking at uh, the topic of prophylaxis. And we're just gonna do some more puzzles. I, I tend to like to do these, these classes with puzzles. Let's go ahead and get this board ready to go here. And uh, does anyone know what prophylaxis is? What is it? Make a move to prevent your opponent from doing something. Yeah, so prophylaxis, right, is preventing your opponent from doing whatever they're planning on doing. So if you ask yourself, you know, what does my opponent want to do in this position, then you can say, okay, what can I do to prevent that idea? And that's called prophylaxis. Uh, we'll get it on the board so we can sort of see. This is the game between Henrik Danielson and Thomas Luther from 1999. And this game continued with a nice attack for white. So white is, is obviously on the attack here. And in this position, black played bishop to e7. So we want to ask ourselves, you know, what is it that black wants to play if it's his turn? That's usually a useful thing to ask. And I find that as you progress in chess, eventually it just becomes second hand. It's like you're always thinking about me and him. You always think of both plans. And you sort of have like equal respect. You're always, your first thing is like, what are they doing? But you have to sort of get in the habit. That's not something that uh, just comes naturally, at least not to most people. So here, uh, I'll give you guys a couple minutes here. You might want to pause at home because whenever I stop talking, that all gets cut out and then they get a lot more time than you do at home. Uh, so if you need more time, it's, it's worth pausing. So ask yourself, what is it that black wants to do? That's the first thing before you just start doing random moves. And after you establish what black would do on his turn, uh, only then can we start to think, how can we prevent him from doing this idea? So I'll give you guys just a, a minute here. All right, Ken West. H tank takes G5. Yeah, if it's Black's turn, he wants to take on G5. So this, this we understand. He's attacking it several times. And obviously, due to the pin, well, you can take back on the H file, but then trading, and your queen's on H1. Okay, but you know he's going to at least win a pawn here. So we have to do something about this, says White. And so the move played in the game was, was pretty nice. In this puzzle, you guys have a chance of solving. But don't worry, the ones that the Grandmaster couldn't solve, I'm not going to show you. Don't worry, those ones, those ones are right out. What, queen to h5? Yeah, so this, this little move, queen to h5. And that's not a, a move you would typically expect. But once you start thinking, OK, how do I prevent him from taking on g5? Then you start to get these ideas. Oh, maybe I can make a pin on the h-file. And so that was played in the game, and it's actually quite a strong move. And we'll show the game because it didn't go that much longer. And again, if you're thinking, what does black want to do? Well, he probably wants to start thinking about castling queenside, which means he's got to move his knight, he's got to move his queen, and then he can castle. So he moved his knight out of the way. That's step one for him. And now <clears throat> white made a move that you know, we could describe as a prophylactic move. You'll notice, all right, the bishop can't go to c5. And if the bishop has to stay there, then it's in the way of the knight. So this move is good in developing your pieces. Nothing wrong with that. But what's funny is, even though you only have your queen out there, you already can think about the winning blow with f6. This also is very strong. You can already just go for it. And the computer wants you to sack a piece on f6, and it says you're down a piece. Because if you take, then g6 is pretty annoying. So he already could have had a, a strong winning attack just straight out of the opening, but developing your pieces also quite strong. And okay, white is still winning in this position. It's just a matter of, of being able to prove it here. And after queen d6, we'll pause one more time. Uh, again, by now I think hopefully we, we know what black wants to, to play in this position. Black wants to castle queen side. And this move is a little bit trickier. So I kind of like this, this move. It's, it's a little bit more complicated. So we're, we're, we're still warming up for the really tough stuff. Yeah. Pawn to f6 to prepare bishop to h3 to prevent castling. Okay, you want to play here. And then after here, you're doing what? Bishop to h3. Bishop to h3 to prevent castling. That's 
Okay, that was quite an interesting idea. I assume, I mean, I could drop my knight back as lame as it looks. Yeah, so f6 is, is definitely one of the, uh, the moves to, to consider here. Um, and after I, I take, yeah, you wanted to play bishop h3. This is actually quite a strong idea. Uh, I doubt I can just drop my knight back because of g6. It looks pretty good. And I don't know, I guess I have to like take this or drop my queen in or, or something like this. Uh, and yeah, this is still pleasant for white. So this also is a, a very acceptable answer. Um, well, it's not the one played in the game. No, if you play that in a game, you play f6 and, and you play bishop h3, you're doing great. So, so you have to imagine in your head if you kind of had two moves, if they castled and you could play two moves in a row, what would you like to do? But don't worry, this is the easy one. The next puzzle. So in the game, white here played knight to a3. That, that everybody was thinking about, but nobody, nobody said. And the point is, yeah, if they castle, knight to b5. And the problem for black is your queen doesn't have very many squares to go to. If you go here, then knight a7. You can't go anywhere else, so you have to play here. And now? Rook to d1, trading lots of stuff. You want to trade all the stuff? And then I, I mean, I can take here, or I can kick you away, and then I can take here. Yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to trade all the stuff here. So I heard, yeah, I heard part of the idea. F6, for yeah, excellent. Yeah, F6 with the Ken West idea of, of bishop to h3 is really strong here. Much stronger than just like taking this pawn or something. This is nothing here. Um, and if you like just go back, all right, this move is actually quite strong. And suddenly the tables have turned. Notice how you can't take due to queen d2. Ouch. <laughs> And then the game didn't last much longer, so just for, for fun, let's just see the conclusion. Uh, he played c6. Um, now, rook d1 was actually the strongest move here, but he played knight to c4, which also is winning. And after these trades and castles, again, a lot of moves white could play here, but uh, just to see the, the conclusion. Black here just, I don't know what he was thinking. So this move just loses really, really fast. I, I don't know, really know what he was thinking, so I mean, that just, he took this and all the tactics worked out for white. So <laughs> that was the conclusion of the game. But it was all based on this first idea. Uh, the only way to, to really find this, this winning plan here is to understand what black is going to do. So when you understand he's going to take on g5, you might come up with this rather creative way of stopping him from going through with what he wants to do. All right, so now we got a, another example here. We'll flip the board. So the last one was an example of being on the attack and using prophylaxis on the attack. This one is an example of using prophylaxis when you're on the defense. And this is the game between Dimitar Donchev and if, I'm going to mess up. All right, versus Savchenko from 1994, because that's how much I can read. <laughs> um, and in this position, we'll, we'll look at what happened. So in this position, it's white that starts a big attack. And after uh, a few moves here, just so we can get a feeling for the plot. So after g4, it's white that is thinking about an attack. He's going to play g5. Uh, he's going to play queen h5. And I'll give you this, this first one. This could be a part of it, but I'd rather get to the, the main plot here. Here, black played the prophylactic g6, which after, if you play g5, you're not going to bring your, your queen in here. So that's a, a very prophylactic move. Um, but we got this position, and white goes here. So now I'll let you guys think about this position. So we want to be thinking about what white's next move is, because if you miss his next move, it's going to be a disaster. And after that, we're going to think about what can we do to prevent that idea from happening. It's too simple. 
It's too easy to stop. Okay. Yeah, so as he's yeah, as he's indicated, yeah, he's going here. So that's that's something we should try to avoid. Yeah. I wonder if he also has the opportunity to sack the rook and then make queen h4 with tempo. Mm. Okay, so yeah, are you thinking about taking and it might take back you queen h4 with tempo when I'm now on g8? You're going to find a way to checkmate me? I guess so. Got that bishop over there and then nice yeah. see six yeah. Yeah. Away. yeah, so yeah, rook, rook h7 also looks pretty pretty deadly here. So yeah, I can see yeah don't, yeah, don't, don't, don't forget about that guy. So that's going to be very. <laughs> Very important in a lot of variations we see. Okay, so pawn to e5 was suggested. And I'm glad because I was ready for that one. I saw that one coming. This move is actually no good because of the surprising. Where did, where'd it go? All right, it didn't go anywhere. But uh, okay, the move is, is 9 to 5. And then, yeah, this is just going the wrong way. Okay, and then there's all sorts of combinations of like taking and opening up my my bishop. And yeah, okay, opening the G file is is going to be pretty good for me. So this actually is is very dangerous. No, so not E5. And then knight of six. Okay, so a very interesting move, right? Uh, and this is the correct answer. And yeah, so after you took here, what was uh, the next move you wanted to play? You want to play knight f6. Okay, I assume I should take the opportunity to toss this, just check in while I can. Let's just keep the h file open. You, you can take it. That's fine. And then, uh, then I get to consider if I get to take on a7 and bring my queen in and use my, my bishop here. You know, I'm thinking like, I'll check you. And if you go back, now I can do something like this. Looks, looks, pretty, looks pretty scary. You're half right, which isn't right enough, but we're getting there. Uh, so that is the problem, right? So in this position, if you stopped here too and you said, you know, what is white gonna do? He needs the position to be as open as possible. So his next move here is h7. And then, you know, with lots of dangerous threats. So, so king h7 preventing his idea. OK, very good. And now um, what happens a lot of times when people are attacking is, you know, you leave all these weaknesses. This guy is, is a little bit weaker than any pawns that black has. And black should get a decent game if he, he just continues with the following plan. But uh, let's see what, what actually happened in the game. And then we'll show some crazy computer nonsense that you guys didn't calculate. Um, OK, in this position, everything is fine. If black here plays the move e5, he's much better. But in the game, he decided to go g5. And you know, after this, there was a tactic here that he, that he missed. Uh, white played here, and suddenly he's winning. And it's not really a, a tactics class, but uh, And half of these moves are the right moves, but OK, now white is just winning. All right. Which isn't uh, you really the point of, is actually the game. The point is to figure out this exercise. And in this position, uh, you also could consider this crazy move. And after this, the complications are really ridiculous. And if you play like a super computer, and even the computer couldn't figure everything out. I had to like help it out and like, well, what about this line? And like it couldn't figure it out. Yeah, so, so the first couple moves here, I mean, all right, this position, it, it seems pretty easy. We're thinking either we're just going to simply move the rook away if it's our turn as white. So all right, let's, let's take that. I'll, I'll, I did that one. You guys can do the next one. Um, now what is white threatening? Knight to f5. Knight to f5. Yeah, using the bishop again. So what are you, what are you going to do about that? Let's see how do you guys stop this? Six. 
F6. And again, not E5, um, because this is pretty bad. You can't take the knight, because then I'm, I'm taking here with the bishop. OK, F6, very good. And now, among all the moves, the most complicated for you guys is here. And if you find the right move here, you, you can pause and spend like hours and hours at home trying to figure this out. Uh, then, I mean, you're just you're a genius because <laughs> it gets wild and crazy, and it's all based on tactical stuff. Uh, I'll give you guys a minute for some reason, and then I'll show you the answer. But it is worth trying to understand. This is like the final point. The only reason to show this really is to ask this this one question now: is if you were playing with the white pieces, how would you proceed from this position? I think I would want the rook on the G file. Yeah, you'd want the rook on the G file. Yeah, so that's White's plan. He's going to go to h1, and he's going to bring the rook in. So that's the plan. And when I first showed this to the computer, it's like, oh, there's two moves. They're both totally winning. And then you, know, you let it think forever and ever, and it's like, uh, I don't know, maybe they're both drawing. Wait, now they're winning again. And it, it couldn't decide. So I had to play all through the lines, wasted three hours of my life for this, the most unimportant part of this lecture. But the two moves you can play here are rook to c7, which, after some crazy complications, black is slightly better. And knight to c7, which at first thought was the best move, but then it, like, it changed his mind. Uh, well, one of the points of putting the knight on c7 is you're protecting e6. So after the king moves over, your queen can safely go to g7. Unlike the other line where you just let him take on e6 because you're a computer and you don't care. Um, so in this position, you, of course, have the move bishop takes here. But now, uh, again, all right, he attacks the e-pawn. We defend it. After here, it's also interesting. Why did white play this move? So again, you need to use a little prophylaxis in this position. I'll, I'll give you a hint. This, this move loses. But why? Yeah, what is white's threat here? Yeah. Rook, rook g5, and then you're just going to laugh at me because I can't take the, the pawn or take it, unless I, unless I can, but. Well, I may be down enough in material right now, I can't afford that. So you're going to work in a bishop for the queen, mm -hmm. that's too much. Yeah, yeah. But, then you're, but then your queen has access to h7. So it's actually quite scary. I don't think I would, I don't think I, I would take if I just, let's waste a move here. Yeah, I don't think I would take. I'll let, I'll let you go over here, and then I'll try to take your g-pawn. So I think I'd... Yeah, but, he, but he's trying to trick me. No, I know. But <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Totally yeah. yeah. So when you're playing Ken West, we know what to play. I, I don't know. I think I'd just play here. Do you have a threat yet? I assume there's all sorts of crazy tactics because the computer lines are all, all nuts here. But the, let, me, let, me, let me see if you have a threat. Do you have a threat? If you, if you play rook h8, then I take it. Rook h7, I take on g6. Then if you check, I can go to f7. I don't know. I think, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty well defended here. Um, so not quite. And it does have to do with the knight move. The knight just went to e2, and for a reason. He wants to get to h5. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the knight goes here. So if you take on d2, the knight goes to h5, and you lose. So again, you have to use prophylaxis. And at this point, I'll, I'll give it away. Uh, the move is rook d8, intending rook d5. And if knight h5, we take it, and black wins. We start taking stuff on the second rank. Um, and if here, all sorts of wild and craziness. Um, but we'll stop here and say, 
and it's about equal. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why this move was inferior. <laughs> and if, yeah, if back in this position here, uh, you were, if you saw this position and you, you spent the time and you're like, hmm, what's the difference between knight to c7 and, and rook to c7? And you worked it all out, then, you know, I wish you the best of luck at the uh, world championship this year. Because, uh, okay, what, what, what's this move all about? So again, white has the same idea in mind. Um, and obviously, we play bishop takes f4. I think that was, you know, the only thing to consider here. Um, because my computer told me so. Uh, if here, then yeah, g7 is also like a big threat. When were you looking at it? I was looking at it before rook c7. Before rook c7? Yeah. Like immediately? Yeah, you mentioned like it's craziness. So yeah, you thought about sacking because <laughs> it's. Yeah, because it's like g3 is weak. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, so returning to our main line. Uh, okay, so we have this, this move possible. And if you take, uh, you can play here. And you're just intending to take the g-pawn, so if they, they protect it, uh, you have this move and, you know, and here. And then they take and you go here and they go back and you throw this check in before you play e5 and, okay, and then black wins. So yeah, so it's all really complicated. Um, if instead you just play rook g1, you ignore that my bishop is hanging there. You can play here just allowing this move. Who cares, right? Who, well, who cares? I play here, and we trade a lot of stuff. And this end game is slightly better for black. Everybody happy with that conclusion? Yep. So, uh, <laughs> so as a human, <laughs> Uh, I think if, if white just takes here on h6, like he did in the game, black is just better. But from a practical standpoint, if you take here, what are the chances black figures that all out? You know? And if he does, he's slightly better. <laughs> you know? So, uh, figure that, yeah, just, yeah, so yeah. Sacrifices are inferior, but Yeah, that's why it's great to be white. You don't have to actually calculate stuff. Black has to figure it out. So that's, that's actually perfect. And what also kind of makes it work is the, the presence of this bishop. So you can imagine when your queen gets to the h file, you always have these constant threats. Uh, but uh, it still worked out for white. He won the game. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, Satovsky Daichkov from 2007. And it was a 17 mover, so we'll show the whole game. All right, the winner. All right, so yeah, Ken West, is, uh, he's leaving the room now because it's the winner. He's out of here. That was, thanks, Ken. Uh, OK, so we get this variation. So it's, always, it's an interesting idea, this, this idea. And now the check. And after here, black played the move c4. And either white's in a lot of trouble. Um, or he's got something more clever in mind. So we stop here. And again, what is, what's black's threat? If it's black to move, what are we playing here? Like, why did we play c4? So if, if queen a5, which I'll show in the next variation, it doesn't work because of the threat you don't see. Yeah, and it's, it's not queen a5. I, after you find white's move, I can, I can show you why. <laughs> well, black's initial threat is quite simple. Just what he's planning here after the move c4. a6. Uh, he's just trapping the bishop. <laughs> so yeah, what is white allowed? Um, so we know the threat. And so this is also an interesting one, too, because it's kind of like in between attack and defense. It's sort of both. Um, so we know a6 is coming. So we have to come up with a, a rather clever way to avoid losing our bishop here. Now, if you combine the strength of Mike Kummer and Bill Thompson, you solve this puzzle. It, it takes both of them. Mike had to find the first moves, and then Bill had to find the, the remarkable move. It was great. They were like a perfect team.
And the next hint is, Mike found this move without actually seeing the follow-up, which is probably true. Uh, you might play this move without actually seeing why. <laughs> but uh, How far can I get with e takes f6, planning to bring the uh, bishop up and just see if I can knock your queen around a little bit? OK, I take. Bishop at four. You attacked my queen. All right, but I, but I tell people to always play queen d8. So. Trying to get g7 free for your queen. Yeah, my knight is, is quite useful at the moment. Yeah, it's a good knight. You're doing a good job over there. So, so let's try to do the opposite of what the whole point of this lecture is. Yes. All right. Just, just for, nobody, knows what Black's, nobody knows what Black's doing, okay? Just, just what's like the most natural move that you would play here? Uh, what about a4? Yeah, here we go. All right. A4. A4. So for the moment, we're, we're ignoring this threat. Black played A6. There's nothing better. So A6, trapping your bishop, or check the king. Bishop to A3. Excellent. And uh, you have to block with the knight. If you play here, now we see one of the ideas. And uh, tactical challenges are, are for Saturday. So you can pause your, your video if you want. But here, uh, you have mate in five. Yeah, now Ken sees it. Uh, <laughs> knight g5. And for some reason, we'll analyze this move. All right, checkmate. Wow. And you know the alternative is taking. And now we do check, check, check. And then three checks, so you win. OK, so you have to block with the knight. OK, fair enough. And now here comes the point. So really, I could have started in this position, but I'd like to, I'd like to work you up to it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so very well done. Bishop e8. Not bishop d6, which allows queen d8, preventing you from playing the move. And we'll discuss why, why can't you take the bishop. Um, and here also. Uh, okay, well, let's let's just look at the position first. Yeah, and you take on g7. This is the point. And it doesn't matter where your your rook goes. Either way, I mean, White's doing great. This is my next move. Yeah, get the pin on the, the seventh rank, and yeah. So either way, it's okay. This is quite good for White. The past h pawn is, is, is also handy. Um, so in the game, it, it wasn't played. Let's see, at some point here, I can, I can show you the move that was suggested. At a, <coughs> is it here? Where can, I show, where can I show the move that you requested? Um, maybe in this line. OK, if here, queen a5, okay. um, you can just take and go here. In your line, let's let's go back to the very very start. Um, and again, yeah. So if you just play queen a5, let's pretend let's pretend it's your move. Um, and now if queen a5, I still have this. And there are several lines where you take here, and I just laugh at you. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's nice. I really needed to use like my, my extra move more beneficially. You know, here I think you just take my rook, and I don't have to take this. But you know, if I had if I had used my move a little more beneficially, <laughs> um, it's interesting. Yeah, the move move queen a five just never worked. So if we go one more time back, we'll we'll watch the actual game here. Uh, we got this position, so he didn't take. He played queen d eight, and white played like absolutely perfect from here. So he went here. Bishop was attacked, so he found a way, and the bishop escapes. So the bishop went in. It went the long way. Tried to hang itself, but it couldn't be taken. 
Notice, too, that this move is a disaster. I mean, we take on f6 with some threats here. So that'd be just disastrous. Um, so the game saw black develop his pieces. And again, a very, very nice move here by white. Uh, after taking this, this very nice move again, knight g5. The point is, if you take and my queen gets to come in here, it's over. So here, a castle. Please take on c3. Um, and here, and now, his move is, is just as good as another move too. Here, you can just take here, check, and then if you just get this queen in here, it's over. Uh, but he went here, the, the same idea. Now he, he's going to take here, check, and he's going to bring the queen in. So here, black already gave it up. There's nothing to do. The queen's coming in, and the game's over. So that was the, uh, the slightly more challenging example of the knight. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's really brilliant stuff. It seems like the bishop is just getting trapped out there. And then after a few moves here, bishop e8, a very nice move. And I like that that move was found instantly, but you know, a4, bishop a3, that was, that was the tough part. Um, all right, so this is Luke Van Whaley versus Mikal Krasenkow. It's another position where like, you have a bishop to the back rank and you can't take it. <laughs> yeah, will it be another bishop to the back rank and you can't take it puzzle? It does look like that. I'm just saying from the, from the opening, this is one of those. Mm -hmm. seen yeah, if you want to see the opening too, we can, we can have a look. Um, There's a line where Bishop A is played, and like Black can't take it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so yeah, so this, yeah. this crazy line I used to play until I realized it's impossible to play Black here. <laughs> <laughs> I tried forever to defend these kinds of positions, but it's it's impossible. <laughs> just just don't do this at home. Uh, leave it leave it to the pros, and even here it didn't work out. <laughs> Um, it's really hard to play these. It, white uh, sacrifices a pawn, but he gets a huge initiative right out of the beginning. So I recommend this, this opening as white. Um, and in this position, while well, white got all of his pieces out, black took a couple pawns. And we reached this position. So again, here we pause one more time. Uh, we want to see what white is threatening. And when you see this position, I think when you're white, you're, you're getting really excited. There's all sorts of crazy stuff you might consider. But when you're playing this as black, it's a lot harder to consider those things. But if you think about, well, if I was white, what kind of like, would I sacrifice everything? I got, I got these awesome rooks. My bishops are, are going crisscross. Um, there's all sorts of potential here. So first think of it, it's, it's your opponent's turn. What, uh, what is he he's threatening in this position? Black. So it's black to move. But what is white threatening? Let's, let's give your opponent the turn. What would he play here? Rook to d7 check. Yeah. Rook to d7 check. And we'll see this in the game. Um, so in the game, I guess we'll, we'll go over the game first so we get a, sort of an idea of what's going on. In the game, bishop e6 was played which did nothing to stop this threat. Um, and after taking, what happened here is very, very funny, too. I like the ending. I also like to show games that are really funny. OK, so white repeated. Very good. Uh, and then he played the best move. And then he repeated. And then he played the best move. All right, and then he repeated. And, and then he played the, the best move. He said, fine, I'll, I'll go checkmate you. And in this position, Black gave it up. Made is, made is coming. <laughs> uh, and I love that he repeated like so many times. That was great. <laughs> and they never made it to move 40. So <laughs> maybe he was just getting a little bit of extra time. There might have been an increment, or Maybe he was just toying with him. Who knows? Um, so I mean, you're, you're threatening. There's a, there's a lethal attack. I mean, white is threatening to mate you in this position. Rook d7 and, and mate follows, with or without repeating several times. 
Well, we know the threat now, so it's black to move. Uh, how do we parry the threat, rook to d7? Or at least make it so that when rook to d7 appears on the board, it isn't as strong as it is as it was in this position here. And that's what prophylactic thinking is all about. So you're, you know what you're, they're going to do. And when it happens, you want to be ready so that it's not as big of a threat as it currently is. Because right now, it's, it's terminal. But you play one move, and, and you might survive. And it's not a, a turning the tables thing. It's not like black suddenly is winning. It's black is trying to draw here. <laughs> I mean, white, white is very, very active. OK, knight c5, which is definitely one that needs to be considered. That controls d7. Sometimes I go to b3. OK, that's a very good move to consider. But after here, what did, did you have him think what white would do here? Oh, yeah, rook f6 probably. Yeah, rook f6. Um, and yeah, this is, this is bad news. Yeah, that looks pretty bad. <laughs> All right, and uh, OK, I'm, I'm glad you weren't tempted to, to take this, because now it's, it's quite different. That's what I wanted. That's what you wanted, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, it just doesn't work um, due to this sacrifice. So we're looking for the black move? Looking for the black move. King to g7. Let's go forward. King to g7, the right move. All right, Ken West. <laughs> yeah, now uh, rook d7 doesn't have as much power. We can, we can go to h6. And that's, that's all there is. Now, uh, in this position, I don't know where Danny is. Because we're, we're the only ones in the world that have studied this position for hours and hours and know why bishop e6 is so much better than bishop to f5. Because that's what we spent all night doing. We studied this position. <laughs> By so. No, we were just trying to figure out why this is slightly more accurate than bishop to f5. Um, and now, even if you do, you do mix it up a little bit. Um, you can go here. And this position should actually be equal. So yeah, just running away from the attack actually was the right answer here. Putting the king on g7 <laughs> makes it so the, the threat wasn't as strong as it was in the initial position. So excellent, uh, a fantastic uh, use of prophylactic thinking to come up with the, uh, the right answer there. And uh, OK, if you like these, these puzzles, just please make sure to hit like, share, subscribe. There's all these buttons under the, under the video. You just hit them all. Um, and thanks, everybody, for coming out here tonight.